Hi guys, it's Emma here. Welcome along to another episode of Spurred on TV and another episode of Youth Watch. Now, we have our man here, Craig Vi, our man watching the youth all the time. You well? I'm very well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well. How are yeah, you, Emma? I'm very, uh, I'm, obviously, I'm great. This is nice, isn't it? Oh, great, I nice. like this. Yeah, Craig and me start come back again. You're yeah? an upgrade on Barnaby. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> oh, Ooh, so he's our boss. We really need to behave ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Barnaby, you've got lovely hair. Yes, great hair. Mm. Anyway, we digress. So we're talking youth this week, and yes. we have got some seriously exciting prospects to talk about. We're obviously going to talk about the boy Shane Harrison. We've we're got be, to. We have to. We're going yeah. to talk Nathan Odua. We're going to talk about Dominic Ball, king, mm. killing it up in Scotland. We're going to talk about Ego, which might not necessarily be quite so good. Yeah. Yeah, but we're also going to talk about the under 21s results and we're going to finish off with the babies, the under 18s and younger. Because <laughs> there are. That's how good our academy system is. There's so many yeah. coming up. They're mm. like babies. Toddlers. They are toddlers. They are toddlers. Yeah, yeah. Toddlers with the ball. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, let's start with Shayon Harrison. Talk to me about this boy. Yeah, let's start with Shayon Harrison. Um, so, he's, he's 20, no, 18 years old now, sorry. Um, and this season so far, he's scored nine goals in 13 games. Um, and... He is a prospect. That's, I'll that's, say. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off by saying that. He's a prospect. The, the, the Shane Harrison, along with um, uh, CCV, Cameron Carter Vickers, who we'll talk about a lot, Tom Glover and Alfie Whiteman, mm -hmm. were all given squad numbers a bit earlier in the season, uh, particularly for the European games in mind, the Europa yeah. League, um, which is a really good sign. And I'm led to believe now that they are training regularly with the first team. So it's a really good step up for these players, and it's probably what they need to kick on in their careers. Shane Harrison um, has been a, a, a real prospect for, for a while now. Last season in the under-18s, he scored, um, I think it was 15 goals in 18 appearances. Nice. Uh, including... That's Harry Kane stats, that, that is. That is, <laughs> yeah, including three against Arsenal. Good boy. Nice, and we like four it. four against Chelsea. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, this boy is um, already ready to smash I know, it. I know, I <laughs> know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he's, he's, I mean, he's still young. He's still young. He's, he's quite a tall lad. Um, he's left-footed mainly, but Lovely. can play play with both feet. He's good in the air. Um, it, it, the one sort of thing I'm, I, I wouldn't call it a criticism, but the one thing about him at the moment is that he's po possibly still a bit lightweight. Mm -hmm. um, he's got quite a slim frame on him for, for a lad that is, you know, relatively tall. Um, it's but a bit crouch, crouchy esque language. Not that quite. Not <laughs> quite that tall. Yeah. No. 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 He's not like that. Um, and uh, and he, he's he's good with the ball at feet. He, he makes good runs, intelligent runs, um, and he's got a bit of pace about him as well. But He's got an eye for goal, and that's that is like that see. is what we like to see, and that is that's always the hardest thing to come by. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we're talking about the fact everyone's talked about the fact we need another striker in the mm. summer to back up our man Harry Kane. But could you make an argument for Shea on making the step up into well, yeah. the first I team mean, squad? Well, yeah, I mean, Posh already has made that argument. In January, I think there was quite a bit of disappointment that we didn't sign another striker as backup to Harry Kane. Mm -hmm. But he, he came out and said, look, you know, we, we've got um, Shea and Harrison and we've also got uh, Kaziah Sterling who are training with the first team. And he, he made out that they were ready to be called upon and he was ready to call on them when needed. So... Yes, I can. I can see next season Shane Harrison probably being in and around the matchday squads a bit more, certainly for the European games. Cup games. Um, and cup games in particular, because yeah, it's going to be Champions League next I was going to say, I was about to say he'll be around for the Europa League, but we're not going to have to yeah. worry about the Europa League no, next season. No, <laughs> goodbye Europa League. So, League Cup. Yeah. League Cup, FA Cup. Yeah, and uh, I think he'll be knocking on the door. Yeah, so I think I, I would like to see him start to get a chance. Mm -hmm. Um, look, he's not gonna he's not gonna be breaking into the first eleven, not for a good couple of years. But uh, the starting eleven, that is. But you might see him in and around the yeah. the match day squads, particularly for the cup games. And he might go out on loan next season as well. That's another thing. But that would probably be good to toughen him up as well. But it? yeah, he's an exciting player, and um, he, he he's got that that killer instinct in front of goal. Um, he's got a really good shot on him, uh, and his positional play, mm -hmm. I think, is, is really good and what marks him out as well. He reads the game very well, makes very intelligent runs. Um, and he's just come off the back of scoring a hat-trick oh, in a game yeah. against Sunderland. Against the league leaders, no less. Yeah, so um, we're going to talk about that a bit later. We are going to talk um, about that later. Yeah, no, looking hot. Hot. Well, it's interesting you mentioned about players going out on loan because uh, our next one up is uh, Nathan Odua, who obviously has been around and about and out on loan a fair bit. Yeah, and I've spoken about Nathan Odua um, quite a few times on here as well. And um, I really like Nathan Odua. He is 20 years old. I was getting him and Shane Harrison confused <laughs> Just to confirm, before. He is he 20. Is 20. I there can is no T in his name. No, 
And again, he's a left, he's a left-footed, <laughs> left-sided uh, attacker. Um, and uh, most people probably know he went out on loan to uh, Rangers at the start of the season. Made a few and Scottish players look a bit stupid. He did make a few Scottish players look a bit stupid. I mean, it's not hard, is it? I mean, it's really, not hard at that it, level. But the, a, the, the championship uh, yeah. in Scotland. But the rainbow flick he pulled off. If you haven't seen it yeah. yet, go find it on YouTube. Yeah. It is a sight to behold. I don't think many. Scottish players appreciate it. Though. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't like it. Basically, and they all tried to beat him up afterwards. Yeah, but, you every, know, look, every, every match. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But he's a strong lad, and like he, he was riding challenges, and he was he was taking the punches and and rolling with it. And that's what I like about Odua, right? He he's a big lad. He's about six foot tall. Um, he's he's beefy. He's he's got good tone. You know, muscular. Um, he's pacey, and he's got some trickery about him. And in pre-season last year, he was absolutely on fire. Um, you know, Mark Warburton goes off to Rangers, takes him and Dominic Ball, and he starts looking really good. And you're thinking he's getting some game time, he's looking good on the ball, he's looking exciting, looking like a prospect. All of a sudden, it starts to go off the boil for him a little bit, and um, he, he starts getting less first team opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, they sign, I think, a, a winger in his position in January, and both the club and Odiwer and, and potentially Spurs as well decided to cut the I'm loan sure. short. Which was a surprise. Dominic Ball remained at the club. And we'll um, talk about him in a minute. Yeah, we will. <laughs> and uh, they brought Odua back to Spurs. Now, at this point, I wasn't sure whether they're gonna, they were going to try and reintegrate him back into the under-21s or what they were going to do. Uh, he did play one match at that time, but then they loaned him back out again to Colchester this time, where he's only made two appearances. Which doesn't... Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't it, bode well, does it? It um, negates the value of sending someone out on loan if they're not going to play, because that's kind of the yeah. point. Yeah, exactly. Maybe that's why he came back from Rangers, because he wasn't going to get the game time. But you start to, to question, I, I don't want to say his attitude, or uh, I, I just I don't know what it is. There's he maybe, seems to make good starts, and yeah. then it seems to fall away, and all of a sudden then he's not being picked anymore. It's just the progression, It's just he's not kicking on with the progression. Yeah, which and seems a shame because, like we said, he's got so much natural talent. He has, know. yeah. Those early games for Rangers, he he was brilliant. Yeah. He scored five five goals in pre-season as well. Scored scored one goal in five games for Rangers uh, before coming back, and um, I think he made three assists as well, something like that. So he's got he's got the talent. He's definitely, he's definitely got, got the, the talent. talent. So My worry for him is whether he remains at the club well, this was gonna beyond be, the summer. This was going to be my next question. Do you think he will actually... Stay. I don't know. My gut feeling is that he will probably be moved on. That would be a shame. It would be a shame. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's such a great problem to have, but we've got a real embarrassment of riches coming through the youth yeah. set up at the moment. And as much as you'd want to keep everybody, actually, you can't. There has to be something mm. that separates, you know, the very best from just the good. And maybe this is a, an occasion where he's not up with the very best. I don't know. Which it, It's very strange, you know, and mm. I, I'm... I'm not sure if there's something going on that we don't know about, but I I do see what you mean that maybe his his time at the club might come to an end. But yeah. I hope not. I said no. Pull it out of the talent. bag, Nathan. You can do it, son. <laughs> You've got the talent. Come on, show us what you're made of. Please, please. Um, but we all talk about somebody else, and we have already mentioned him, uh, who is yeah. smashing it in Scottish football at the moment. Certain Dominic Ball. Yeah, Dominic Ball. So again, a 20 year old centre half. They're all 20. Yeah, they are. Yeah, well, at that, at that age group, they are. Yeah, <laughs> uh, in the under 21s. <laughs> All right, yeah. all right. Um, but no, he's doing really, really well. Again, he went up there with um, with Nathan Odua. And um, in fact, Nathan Odua was getting into the first team before Dominic yeah. Ball was. Um, and I thought that's how it was going to go. And, and maybe Ball wasn't going to get many chances. But he's proved his class, actually. Um, I mean, he's uh, he, again, he's quite tall. He's over six foot. He's, um, a, again, a, a good, strong lad. But he's quite composed on the ball. Again, very good positionally. Um, had a very good partnership with Velkovic um, before CCV stepped up CCV. Uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, and, there's going to be uh, endless charts we can do with that oh, when he gets in brilliant. the first team. Yeah, and that won't that won't be long. <laughs> won't trust be long me, either. Either. that won't no. be long. He really is knocking <laughs> on the door. Um, but yeah, Dominic Ball, he, he's made his way into the Rangers team. He's been playing there at centre half for them quite a bit. But he's he's a bit of a utility player as well. He can play in other positions. He's also played uh, on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, side of defence as a, uh, a right back, um, and actually in the semi final he, he played Celtic. against I Celtic, mean, his first game. old firm derby, the biggest game in Scottish football. Yeah, and he played the Eric Dyer role. Oh, oh, and boy was he good. I mean, oh. the, the, honestly, I mean, look again, it's Scottish football, so we can't get too, can't excited, get too excited. But I mean, that's a big occasion as well. Like in the, that the atmosphere, pressure of an old yeah, derby. It's in huge. that atmosphere, in the semi final of their, the Scottish FA Cup, coming off the back of just uh, getting two ch two winners' medals, the the Championship winners' medal and also the Scottish Challenge Cup. Um, he's, he's, it's a really successful time for him, and it, it's it, what a learning curve as well. Oh, completely. I mean, that you know, you really can't beat that in terms of. 
I mean, it's going to be interesting next season, obviously, when Scotland, if he stays up there for another season or whether mm. he comes back, because obviously with Rangers uh, now back in the Scottish Premier League, yeah. that kind of constant pressure of being one of the favourites to win the league, the you know the battle with Celtic, mm. it, it almost, in a weird way, would be worth him staying yeah. up there to actually see that through. But it's interesting you talk about his versatility, because that seems like such a potch hallmark exactly. of all our players. Yeah is yeah. their ability to play in different positions Various to adapt positions. to different tactics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which means to me, it sounds like he's definitely one who's going to be Yeah, pushing. again, I, I'm not sure whether it's for next season. Um, and as I understand it, he's already expressed an interest in going back to Rangers yeah. for next season. Well, like I said, I think that would Should the opportunity him. arise. Yeah. Um, and I think so too. I think that would be really good. And I think actually he proved in that game, in that semi-final against um, Celtic, that... It, even that small step up in class from the Scottish Championship to the Scottish Premiership, it's not going to phase him. No. And um, he wasn't phased by the occasion at all. He, for me, and maybe I'm biased, and I am biased, but um, he, he biased. no, not at all. He got my MOM. He was Did man he? of the match. Yeah. Well, I heard a lot of people who are not Spurs fans talking about how well he played. So, yep. you know, he must be doing something right. If he's he not is. Just us talking about him. Yeah. Good lad. Keep it up, Dominic. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll shift away from players for a moment and go to management. Yeah. Ugo. Ugo Echiog, there you go. You didn't think I'd be able to say the surname without getting it wrong. But <laughs> no, I got it I right. I thought you were going to shirk that I one. got it right. I didn't yeah. shirk it. But Ugo, I mean, we had been very happy with everything that was happening with the under-21s. Yes. Yeah. But. Um, and, and it's not that we're not happy, <laughs> right, Ugo? We're not not happy, OK? But it, it, I, I just think. Craig's picking his words here. Yeah, I think it's time for a question mark to appear. Not over his job, but just over some of the decisions that he's been making. Um, it, it has been, uh, all acad- and I've spoken about this with Barnaby before, all academies are always in a state of flux. Mm-hmm. Players are always being uh, lifted from the, the younger age groups into the older age groups. The older players are, are going off on loans or coming into the first team, into the yeah. first team and it, then dropping back down mm-hmm. again, depending on the games, depending on, on what they're trying to achieve from any particular competition or any particular match. So they are always changing. However, when you've got your best players at your disposal, I don't know why he doesn't play them. He's had opportunities to keep playing people like Marcus Edwards Mm -hmm. when Marcus Edwards has been standout players in the matches that I've seen. And then for some reason in the next match decides not to play him. Um, He seems to change things a little bit. We've, We've had fairly settled teams from time to time, but every time you think we're getting a bit of rhythm going, he seems to change it up again. And we have had a few players who've been injured. We've had a few players who've gone out on loan, like we said. But um, yeah, there's just a few question marks for me. It's not a results-driven business at that level. They're not always looking out for, although it does matter, they're not looking out for these, these players to be winning every match. No, it's about how they're playing. It's about how they're playing, how they're developing, about the playing style. Um, and, and there is uh, an ethos at the club now to kind of try to get all of the teams playing as similarly as possible. There are variations within it, but we all like to play, play, play the ball out from the back. Mm-hmm. Ugo sticks to that. Um, we're not a long ball team by any stretch of the imagination. You've got players like Kyle Walker-Peters, who, uh, again, I think you'll be seeing him. We've uh, got a lot of double barreledness. We have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in our youngsters. We have, and a, and a second Kyle Walker. Well, yeah. Um, but I think you'll be seeing him in and around matchday squads and the, the first team next season, uh, certainly in training at least. Um, but he bombs on, just mm-hmm. like the Kyle Walker bombs on. Um, and so the, the playing styles are similar. Mm-hmm. Um, I, j- I just think... There's been a lot of inconsistency that's been creeping in. Performance levels haven't always been that good. We, we've had a lot of matches where we started slowly mm-hmm. and gone behind and then had a lot of work to do to get back into those matches. Some of those matches we've gone on to win. Um, and he's admitted afterwards that the, the start wasn't good enough, the performance level wasn't good enough. Yeah. But too often for me, we've been inconsistent and too often we've started slowly and it's damaged us. OK, so basically you'd like to see a little bit of a change in the way that he's approaching matches, potentially. Yeah, I think so. I think I'd just like to see him playing the best players when he has them at his disposal more often, getting more um, set teams mm-hmm. um, and, and sticking with those teams and those formations um, and, and playing them more regularly. I mean, I think that's that's what really helped players like Ben Taleb and Mason come through the system, Tommy Carroll as well, um, particularly under Sherwood. Um, playing all the time, playing together, and, and Harry Kane was included in that as well, and, and you could see that then translated into the first team. Yeah, there is a, a little bit of a lack of that going on at the moment. Well, let's balance that out a little bit. 
talk about the under-21s results recently. I mean, you know, we've mentioned it very briefly earlier on, but they had a brilliant result they at did. White Hart Lane. They did, yeah. Against Sunderland. Yeah, they lost one uh, before that, <laughs> uh, which we won't go into much I'm, detail I'm about. We lost two ones in Middlesbrough. Positive. Yeah, but we'll, to yeah well, we'll just skim over that one because that is the inconsistency <laughs> coming in again. But then we go and beat the league leaders. Yeah. We go and beat Sunderland, who... Uh, it always amazes me. When you think of youth football, you would never think of Sunderland being any good. It's weird, isn't it? But they, they tend to pack their teams out with big, athletic, strong players. Players who, again, have been in and around the first team a lot. They tend to be older a lot of the time than the, the you know, the under-21 bracket would suggest. Um, and so, you know, we, a lot of teams find it difficult to come up against that kind of physicality uh, and intensity. But... We battered them. We absolutely battered them. Three one. We ended up winning. It was a great performance, a really solid performance from our man Shay and Harrison, hat-trick, who bagged the hat trick. Hatrick Harrison. Yeah, Hatrick Harrison. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I think he'll like that too. He'll be he'll be taking that moniker on. Um, yeah, it was a great performance. Uh, Will Miller played really well. I yeah. thought um, set Harrison up for one of the goals with a beautiful cross, lovely headed goal, really sweet back across the goalkeeper, um, and and then two sweet finishes as well. One was a bit of a tap in. The other one, he took it around a player and then slotted it in the far corner. So um, it was a good performance. There was there was a mistake uh, from Tom. It was Tom Glover uh, in goal. Um, went to to pass the ball out and uh, it, it was a poor pass out, to be honest with you. So that led to Sunderland's goal. But on the positive, he also made two cracking saves well, there you go. That, that, you know, guaranteed us the win. So uh, it was a very, very positive performance. Um, I think it was a penultimate performance. So we've got, or maybe there's two games left. I'll have to check. Um, but, but. Let, let's keep this winning mentality going yeah. on now towards the end of the season and, and finish on a high. Brilliant. And so, uh, you know, we'll move from the under-21s. We're going to go even younger now. Yep. We're going to go down to the babies. Yeah. The under-18s. We as are. I would like to call we them. We are. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they all seem like babies to me. They're so young. Well, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately <laughs> to me too now yeah, as well. I yeah, I do. Anyway, yeah. enough about us. So, talk to me about the youngsters. Well... Th- Again, I mean, the under-18s, you could say, up until recently, have been performing better than the under-21s. Um, and it is a good squad of players there. Um, two strange... Befo- we lost twice, basically, in, in quick succession, to Middlesbrough 1-0 and then to Aston Villa 1-0. Um, and the, 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 both matches were very similar in that we tended to control the game for large periods of the time. Um, we looked comfortable for large periods of the time, but we conceded... A sloppy goal in both in both matches. Um, particularly in the second match, it was an own goal. It was a bit of, oh, quite embarrassing actually in the no. second half against Aston Villa. We were about two minutes into. Was it like the a Harry match. Kane own goal, like where it's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen and it goes back in the back of the net? No, I wouldn't go that far. Oh. But it was uh, <laughs> it, it, it was a bit ridiculous, and it was. Uh, I, I'm, I hate naming names in these situations, but Christian Magoma. Like you're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aimed to pass. Uh, aimed to pass the ball back to uh, McDermott and goal, and it just went straight past him. Oh. And rolled over the line, no. and McDermott was scrambling back to, to catch the ball before it went over the line, and, and just didn't. didn't make it. Oh, God. Um, and we we just didn't seem to recover from that. Um, the positives are, however, that we did control the game for large periods of the time. We played some really nice football. Um, we always play nice football, particularly at that level. Um, we in the second game against Aston Villa, I think there were four or five um, players who came up from the under 15s. Um, players like Duncan, uh, sorry, Dylan Duncan, Nia Kirby, um, Tashin Oakley Booth, who we know about. Um, but uh, the, the, the standout. Another double barrel. Another double barrel. We do like that. They are, yeah. <laughs> Posh boys in football. <laughs> Who'd That's the thought? problem, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the, the standout was a, a young lad. I don't know much about him, to be honest. He's a centre-half called John Dinzey. Okay. Um, but uh, by all reports, he showed quite a lot of promise um, and looked quite composed at the back. So they're the positives. Uh, again, I think the under 18s have got one more game to go, um, and I'm going to predict that we're going to win that one and we're going to finish on a high. Fabulous. Well, it sounds like the future's bright. It is indeed, yeah. And actually, we should just touch, before we finish, oh, oh, before on the under-16s and under-15s very, very quickly. This is like a little added extra. This is like the bit at the end of the credits after the film, when it's, oh, it keeps rolling. Yeah, like Pixar always do. That's it, yeah. And then that, that, little, that little extra that's bit. This. Yeah, that's what this is. That's it. Yeah, so thanks for sticking around. <laughs> and now listen to Here's this. Here's the extra bit. Yeah, so the under-16s <laughs> and under-15s. So they both won recently. Uh, the under-16s beat a strong Colchester United side. Now, that was a good performance because... It included a lot of Colchester United's under-18s in oh, that brilliant. team. So, so that's a big difference at that age it, at level At that age well. level, it is, yeah. In and again, strength and stamina. You know, at that level in League One, they do tend to be a lot more physically imposing, mm-hmm. those kind of sides. You know, it's, it's a lot less about the technique. Um, and there were two players as well that were released by Arsenal in the Colchester side. So oh, even better. Well done, boys. Even better. Uh, <laughs> and the under-15s beat Ipswich 3-1. Now... 
this was a good performance, and um, it was at um, where did Whipswich play? Portman Road. Portman Road. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it was at Portman Road. Um, there, there were quite a few fans there watching. Oh, and, that's, um, oh God, that must be a great experience yeah. playing in a big stadium like that. And, and uh, the pitch does look big, big when you're watching under 15s. Well, player, I was about to I say they're you. little. Yeah, it's huge. It was, and it did. It, <laughs> the pitch really did look big. But there were two cracking goals. The first one from Jamie Bowden. Lovely. Um, uh, from just outside the 18 yard box. But then this is a player that. I want you all to watch. I, again, I don't know. I haven't seen enough of this player to, to really know. Which is why we've got to watch but him. But Phoenix Patterson, right? He's played... It's a great name. Oh, what a name. What a name. He's played at centre mid. He's played on the, the left side um, uh, as a left-sided attacker. And he's played as, in that kind of number 10 role. He scored two goals. He was by far the standout player on the pitch for me. Um, and his second goal was an absolute screamer. Oh, lovely. So keep an eye out for Phoenix Patterson. Phoenix Patterson. You heard it here first. Always. So uh, that has been our Youth Watch and our Youth Roundup, and I hope you've enjoyed it and you've got a few players to keep an eye out for. I mean, let us know what you think. Should Shayon Harrison be looking to be a step up for Harry Kane? I mean, do you think Dominic Ball should go back to Rangers? Should we try and keep him here? Should we keep Nathan Odor at the club? Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Drop us a like on Facebook and uh, follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. And uh, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs. Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On, and this is episode three of Smithy versus Slats. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the previous two episodes, I urge you to 